My name is Abhyuday Parmar and currently I'm studying in class 10th, uh, living in Chhatapur, Madhya Pradesh. And my parents have been in touch with UHV and Ganesh sir since a very long time. And we've always uh, been discussing about all these things related to UHV and how to effectively uh, use resources in a more uh, positive manner and all that. And I formally started attending this uh, morning session in September 2021. Unfortunately, this year I haven't been able to attend as regularly due to uh, the school timings and all that. But I can still spot a fair bit of improvement compared to last year. So I would like to begin with the most important realization that uh, I have observed after li starting listening to the morning session, which is the fact that we human beings comprise of two distinct entities, the self and the body, the material unit and the consciousness unit. And nowadays we concentrate all our efforts towards working for the body and fulfilling its desires and what we think are uh, its requirements. But most of us have barely any idea about the consciousness unit. And it's probably the reason that most of us are not uh, happy for more than some time. And a very important realization is that we want to be happy, most of us, uh, actually all of us, no one can deny that. And we don't want to be happy for a minute or for a month or for a decade. We want to be happy forever. And uh, a very important, another important realization is that we can be happy only if we uh, sort of keep uh, control of our feelings, not control, but uh, we have our feelings in line with uh, the feelings of relationship, harmony and coexistence. So I would like to begin my sharing uh, by my understanding emerging out of the exercise one and exercise two. Similar to last year, I would still say that I have a better understanding of exercise one than exercise two. So I have to do a, more work in exercise two, starting with step one, which I uh, think is the most crucial step is seeing the imagination. Compared to before, now I can see my imagination for a longer period of time and more spontaneously. And previously, uh, the process of seeing the imagination was quite passive. Like uh, once a reaction had occurred, now after a bit of time, when I uh, concentrate more effort into that specific thing, I could see the imagination, but now I could see it most in a more spontaneous manner. Coming to step two, uh, where we are supposed to determine whether the thoughts and feelings we're having at the moment are naturally acceptable to us or not, I came to realize that natural acceptance is same across all human beings and does not depend on situation or preference or anything like that. We also do not have to put any external effort to develop natural understanding for something. We just need to see, in, see it within ourselves. And once we can see it within ourselves, it's very easy to get guided by that uh, under taking decisions which require the uh, help from natural, uh, natural understanding. Coming to step three, I observe whether the feeling I'm having right now is in harmony or not. Coming to step four, I try to observe who decided the feeling I'm having right now at the moment. Most of the time, I observe that I'm solely responsible for the feeling I'm having at the moment. The sometimes... Uh, it's very hard to believe uh, at the exact moment that I have decided this feeling. It almost seems like uh, the other person has affected the feeling I'm having right now. But after a bit of evaluation, uh, after putting a, li a little more effort onto that, I can see that it's still somewhat my, uh, my decision that I, uh, I have uh, been undergoing this feeling of opposition uh, into myself. Coming to step five, I try to observe the feeling on which I, uh, basis on which I've decided the feeling. Is it based on right understanding or presumption? This step perhaps requires the most amount of work to be done because 
I've realized that great, great amount of decisions that uh, I make and most of us make are based on pre-assumptions. And uh, a very good thing that has occurred after listening to the morning session is that even if I've made a decision based on the pre-assumption, especially the ones which uh, are meant to be taken uh, very immediately, I, after a bit of time, I can still see that, okay, this decision has been taken on the basis of a pre-assumption, how I could have dealt with it a bit better. Coming to step 6A and 6B, uh, here I can undoubtedly say that the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence are naturally acceptable to me, while the feeling of opposition, disharmony and struggle are not. However, I have a limited understanding of step B and it requires more eff uh, efforts from my side. Coming to step 7A, I try to ensure that the feeling I'm having at the moment is in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence. While it, uh, I might not be able to do this all the time and uh, I might still uh, react, I can still clearly see that the feeling makes me happy. And coming to the step 7B, I can see how the feelings of relationship, harmony and coexistence make me comfortable from within. And if the feeling I'm having at the moment are not in line with these feelings, uh, I might react and I might not feel happy. Coming to exercise two, I would honestly acknowledge that I have a very limited grasp of the steps of exercise two and I'm still exploring. Starting from step one, I can see that the self and body are two distinct identities. Uh, in the step two, apparently I transact between information from the body to the self. In step three, I decide what instructions are to be passed on the, to, to the body based on the sensations that I've got from it. And I've also observed that the sensations that we get from the body, it's totally our decision whether I want to read it or not and how I want to react to it, what instruction do I want to pass onto the body based on the uh, sensation. Coming to this step four, I can clearly see that the self is neither the sensation itself nor within the sensation. But, and there is a distance between the self and the body. In the step five, I see that we read the sensation as associate meaning to it based on our sanskar. Our sanskar gets uh, accumulated over a very long period of time. And uh, while the same sensation, with, uh, with the same sensation, uh, we can react, respond or react in a very different ways uh, depending on the sanskar of two different people, for example. In step 6a and 6b, I see that when my sanskar is based on assumption, I tend to react, but if, it, if, if it's based on right understanding, then I do not react. And if it's based on right understanding, I, more often than not, I can see that uh, it's even though the person that uh, might have not given a favorable response to whatever I said. Maybe it's the lack of his or her competence or maybe it's my fault itself. So uh, we would probably not react, but if it's based on assumption, uh, more often than not, we will react. I can also clearly see that the happiness is our natural characteristic and not an effect from outside. Uh, I have observed that we are solely responsible for our happiness and not any outside situation. And hence, if we start making decisions on the basis of right understanding, we will be in the state of happiness regardless of the outside situation. Another significant change that I, that I can see in myself is that I do not complain now as much as I used to before, albeit an unfavorable situation, uh, maybe uh, some failure in accomplishing some task or maybe an unfavorable response from someone outside. Uh, it has started affecting me less than it used to before. It still does, but uh, more often than not, after a bit of time, I can see that why is it affecting me or like what could I could have done in that situation to better deal with it. Also, I've started observing a situation, not just from my own perspective, but also from the other person's perspective uh, because most of the time, I used to feel like I've been doing the best job I could, but the person uh, 
probably wants to intentionally ruin my work or whatever. But uh, if we try to observe the situation from the other person's perspective, we can see that uh, it's very much possible that it's my fault and not the person's or even, even if it's the person's fault, we need to realize that it's, they're not doing it in intentionally, but probably because of the lack of competence. And uh, I also observed that the situation is probably due to the fact that uh, we are not coordinating properly and we are not understanding the situation from each other's perspective. If we can understand the situation from each other's perspective, uh, the reaction is, uh, won't occur in the first place. Another thing uh, that I have realized while listening to the morning session is that we have uh, a very fixed goal and which is to attain the situation of continuous happiness. And we all are in some way working towards it. Maybe we uh, do not have the appropriate direction, but if we get the appropriate direction uh, onto how we can attain continuous happiness, then it's, then all the human beings can work uh, for the welfare of each other and even if someone is not working that way it's probably because they are misled somewhat and not because they want to intentionally uh, uh, cause destructions or uh, create troubles for other people and once we start seeing that way or at least I when I started seeing that way I got a feeling of relationship for uh, mostly everyone, there's still some people where it's very hard to resist that reaction, but I can still somewhat see it, which uh, is a very good improvement from last year where there are some people uh, for whom I can see the feeling of relationship, but for certain people, I cannot get myself to have that feeling of relationship. And I've also uh, realized that For some people, we might have the feeling of uh, relationship regardless of whether they are, they are harsh with us, for example, our mom or our grandmom or whoever we consider, for example, our teacher. But when some people are not uh, uh, behaving in a favorable way with us, for example, someone, maybe a stranger, we tend to react. But if we realize that everyone is our, uh, uh, if we want to establish the feeling of relationship with everyone around us, then the reaction won't occur in the first place. So that's what I've observed. And lastly, I would like to express my gratitude to Ganesh sir and the entire UHV team for this morning session, which is always helping all of us in various ways. And uh, I would like to work more in order to expand my understanding over all this. So uh, this is where I would like to end. Thank you so much. Very nice, Abhidev. Uh, and I'm sure people have questions and some hands are also raised. Uh, before we go to those, I just wanted to ask a couple of things myself. Um, one was uh, about relationships with friends um, has there been any difference have have your friends said anything regarding what you are doing and how they respond to this and the other question was uh, if you also have some thoughts on health health of the body yes Ji. so coming to the first question which is about friends uh, right from the start I've been very reserved honestly with making friends because I almost felt like um, they always uh, left you alienated in some way or the other. But now I feel like everyone wants to be the friend of everyone and <clears throat> everyone tries to do it the best uh, way they could. But it's probably the mistake from both ends and not just from the other person. So when I can see this, my friendship have uh, significantly improved. 
and I still do not like to be friends with everyone in the school or I don't even talk to most like 50% of the class but like in a regular manner but I still feel like with those who, whom I have deep friendship with I can uh, I can uh, do it better with them and also if someone reaches out to me for some help or something similar I can help them in a better way and without feeling like they're not my friends or we do not talk very often. So that is the thing I have observed with friends. And uh, coming to health, um, my mom has always laid a lot of emphasis on health uh, because she uh, has been following the discipline of naturopathy for a very long, since a very long time. So uh, we have always been very, uh, very attentive towards our health and previously my mom used to do it uh, for me and my younger sister but now we have gotten more aware about the health and uh, whenever we see that our body is not working uh, the way it does in a normal situation we start to take uh, appropriate steps like for example if I feel like uh, I'm feeling uneasy or I'm not feeling the way I do in normal situations. I would probably uh, try to reduce a bit of my diet or maybe ask mom to prepare some appropriate, uh, appropriate medicines or whatever. So the difference from past to now is that now I can do it myself and I have more awareness of it and I do not feel like mom is imposing it on me like the way I used to feel about it before. Very nice, very nice. Very wonderful sharing, Abhi, there. I'm sure, um, you know, a lot of um, credit to your own exploration and, of course, to your parents for involving the whole family in it. 